Ancient manuscripts speak of a leviathan, a gigantic creature that lies on the lagoon's muddy bottom with the foundations of the city of Venice resting on its back. What no one knew was that the leviathan was no longer alive. For centuries, the city had lived and flourished on a rotting corpse's back. But now the corpse had begun to awaken, and the dead have started to rise from the Venetian lagoon. Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Table. My name is Shaggy, and today I am doing a full solo playthrough of Carnival Zombie 2nd Edition. It's been a long time coming, but it's finally here and I'm very excited. This is a cooperative game in which the players are playing characters fleeing Venice. A giant leviathan on which the entire city rests is awakening, and in just three days' time, the entire city is going to collapse into the lagoon. As we're escaping, though, there are tons of infected that will be coming out of the lagoon at night. I'm going to show you how this all works as we play, as always. So let's get started. We're going to be playing on the easy difficulty level, so we place our group marker on the bottom location of the Venice map. Also, all six of our characters get to start with the starting gear. That'd be the item that has the star on it. You then want to shuffle up all of their individual item decks. You then place the six character tokens on the terror track. I've done this in a random order. This is going to determine turn order. We want to place the calendar token on the sun spot of the first ticket. You want to shuffle up the nightmare deck. You want to shuffle up the boss deck. In the black bag, which is known as the abyss, you want to put all four types of starting infected. Those are the green, white, gray, and purple cubes. And because we're playing on the easiest difficulty level, you're going to put two blue survivor cubes and four black paranoia cubes into the bag as well. You shuffle all that up together and then you're ready to begin. And now to finish setup, we need to do something that the game calls the story so far. We're gonna go through this little mini game with each of our six characters. So let's start with uh, our first character here, the captain. You take your bag and you draw out a random cube. Okay, we got a gray cube. We then can consult this little area over here. It's also in the rule book. And it shows you what effect is gonna happen to that character. In the case of drawing a gray cube, they're just gonna get some stress, some terror. That was a bad draw. Only a bad thing happened, nothing good. Now the character has the decision to either go into hiding or to draw again. And I think we'll draw again. Oh no, we got another gray cube. So he gets another stress. That was terrible. Now, once again, we could either go into hiding and stop, or we can go a third time. And I think we will. I think we'll go a third time. Now for this one, we can decide. We can either take a barricade marker, or we can draw one of their item cards. And I say, let's draw an item card. Okay, we got the cocked hat. This says that when a paranoia cube is drawn from the abyss, assign it to a character of your choice. Okay. That can just get added to their available items. But the penalty for going that third time is that we have to draw from the boss deck and we're gonna get stress equal to whatever that boss uh, character's damage is. So let's see. Oh man, and it's a three. That's a little claw symbol there. One, two, three. So our captain is starting off immediately in the uh, in the stressed uh, level there, the terror red level. So that's going to be a problem. We're going to need to reduce their stress. The stress marker here is basically their health. Okay, so now we're done with the captain. We put the cubes back into the abyss bag. And we go again, and we're gonna do this for each of our characters. Number two here is our uh, heavy weapons specialist. So let's draw another gray cube. Are you kidding me? Uh, all right, let's go again. A green, okay, finally, thank you. 
So when you get a green cube, as you can see right here, you get a barricade token. These barricade tokens are very important. You put it here in your storage area, but then in addition, you get a stress. And yeah, I say, let's go again. Well, actually, I tell you what, because we have so much stress here, I think we want to have less stress on our other characters. I'm gonna stop. We're not gonna go that third, third time. So we're gonna put these cues back in. Now we'll go to our third character here. He is the Commando. All right, we got a white token. The way the white token works is it doesn't do anything at the moment, but if we take stress in another turn, then it's gonna add to the stress that we take. But I say that's okay, let's just go a second time. And there we go, we got a green token. So we're gonna get a barricade and we're gonna take a stress plus one more stress for the white. Okay, once again, I think we'll stop there. Okay, our fourth character is the Engineer. Ooh, we got a purple, so we get another barricade, but we're taking two stress for the purple. I think we'll stop there. I'm a little worried about the stress we're taking here. Our fifth character here is the Sniper. Ah, there we go, there's a green. So one stress and a barricade. And let's go again. Okay, a white. Okay, we'll stop. And then our last character is the medic. Okay, a green. We'll go again. Ooh, a purple. So that's another barricade and two stress. Tell you what, he's gonna go a third time. Okay, two more stress, but he's gonna draw a card. Okay, this says when using your character's day ability, you recover one stress. Wow, well that will be very useful since he's really stressed out. So there you go, at the end of all that, we only got six barricades. We got kind of stressed out here, but we got two additional cards. Not the best, but maybe it'll be okay. And there we go, we are now ready to begin. We start the day at sunrise, which is denoted by this little place on the clock. And during sunrise, we do a few things. First, we reshuffle the nightmare deck. And because it's the beginning of the game, we've already shuffled it, and I'm just keeping it off screen right over here. We're then gonna place one of these foundering tokens on one of the locations in Venice. The city is sinking. And we do this to a random location. So anytime you need to do something random, you draw the top card of the Nightmare deck, and there's all sorts of different things here that help you randomize stuff. In this case, we're looking up here to this number, number 10. That means we're going to sink that location on the map. And it's now gonna take an extra movement to move through that space, which is kind of unfortunate because we were probably gonna try to go through there. We're now gonna resolve an event. And once again, we just draw the top card of the Nightmare deck and we see what happens. Right here in the middle, it says decay. Remove one barricade from the storage. I don't mean to be rude, but are you blind? That clearly says four barricades, not one. I mean, yeah, now I can see that it says four barricades, but I don't think that's clear at all. I, that font on the dark background is really hard to see. <laughs> Do you need a prescription for some glasses? <laughs> I mean, I actually do wear glasses, so. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, but that's, that's hard to read. That's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so not a lot of barricades. That is going to be a real problem. We're now done with the sunrise rituals, so we can move on to the first hour of the day. We have four hours during the day, and the first thing we do is decide how far we want to move through Venice. 
Now, because we're playing the easy game, we started here. If we were playing the medium level, we would start right there. And if we were playing hard, we'd start there. And we're going to be moving through these alleyways. And right off the bat here, you can see this plus one. It's going to take an extra movement to go through this alley. So to go to here, that's actually going to cost two movement, which actually means two hours during the day. So that's going to take all of this hour and this hour. And if we wanted to move on to location eight, that would cost another hour. That would only leave us one hour left to do actions. I think we're going to need more than just one hour. So I say look, we're just going to stop right there and we're, that's going to be our movement. So now we have two hours left to do actions and each of our characters gets to do one action. Keep in mind that you have to do your group movement before you start doing any character actions. Before we move on, I'd like to discuss how you actually win the game. What's our goal? Basically, we're trying to flee Venice, and there are three ways that we could do that. We can either run towards the mainland across the Freedom Bridge, but to do so, we're going to be pursued by the infected. Instead, we could take a boat across the Venice Lagoon, but we'll have to fight off the undead in the water trying to sink the boat. Or third, we can contact an airship pilot who will come and pick us up and fly us to safety. Each of these three endings requires a little mini game to determine whether or not you actually escape. Rather than escaping, you can actually stand and fight and try to kill the Leviathan. Now that is a much more difficult way of winning and it requires you to find the holy bomb during the game. I've never even tried that before, so I can't really speak to that one. In this game, I'm trying to reach space B and call up the boat and sail away. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how that works. Now we're going to start with the captain. We're going to go through in turn order. And there's a number of different things that you can do as your day actions. The one thing you could do is rest, which would let you heal to stress. Another thing you could do is add three barricades to our storage. You can also search the location, which will help you potentially get to draw one of your item cards or possibly find survivors. If the location that you're on has one of these sort of symbols on it, like location two and location five, that means that there's a special action that you could take at that location. Location six does not have that, so we can't take that. You could also reanimate any character that has gone off the terror track and become incapacitated. Lastly, you could perform your day ability. Each character has a different day ability that they're able to perform. And luckily the game comes with a handy dandy little character reference sheet here that explains each of the day abilities and the night abilities of each character. We're gonna be consulting that quite a bit. It's also written on their cards here. So we're starting with the captain. Their day ability is that they can eliminate a boss that might still be in the boss area. Because it's the beginning of the game, we don't have a boss there at the, at the moment, so we don't have to worry about that. I think because they are so stressed out, we're just going to have them rest and heal to stress. Now let's move on to our heavy weapons character. His day ability is that he can take one stress in order to use anybody else's day ability. I don't think we're going to worry about that. I think instead we're just going to have him add three barricades to our storage. Moving on to the commando. His day ability is gift. He's able to name one of the characters and do a search action for them. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. He wants to do a little search action for the engineer. So when you do that, you draw one of these nightmare cards. And you look down here. That is the symbol for the infected. That means while searching, we ran across an infected. Normally, if you were searching and you run across an infected, that would cause you to gain a stress. But by using this gift day ability, you ignore that stress. You don't have to worry about it. And you get to choose whether you want to get an item or to discover a survivor. When you discover a survivor, you just take one of the blue survivor cubes and you add it to the bag. I think for now we want to do an item. So we're just going to draw the top card of the item deck for the engineer. And we have a dog whistle. 
Oh, this is cool. This will let us move the <laughs> sort of dog monsters away from us during the combat round. You'll see how that all works out. So that could be a very useful card. There we go. That's their action complete. Now we come to the engineer. Their day ability is enhanced barricades. Basically, they're able to put down four barricades instead of three. And that's exactly what we want to do. These barricades are going to be really valuable for fighting off the infected during the night. And you're going to see that very soon. Okay, we're coming to our sniper. Now, their day ability is exploration. If you look closely at our location, it can be kind of hard to see. You can see there, there are two black dots and two yellow dots around the number. That's showing that at during the night phase, we're going to have two obstacles and two fortifications. The fortifications are going to help us, and the obstacles are going to hurt us as we're trying to defend ourselves during the night. With this exploration, she could eliminate one of those two obstacles so that we only have to deal with one of them. I'm not super worried about that, to be honest. I think I'd rather have three more barricades. And then lastly, our Medic. They have treatment. They're able to remove three stress from a character, including themselves. And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. One, two, three. Reduce that stress a bit. There we go. That was that hour. Well, we have a whole nother hour to work with. So we get to go again. I think I just want the captain to rest. <laughs> well, actually, the Medic could heal him. So instead of resting, he's going to put out a couple more barricades. Let's just barricade up. Three more. I don't want him to get any more stress. I think I'll just have him search on his own. Maybe he can get another card. Okay, well, ran across the infected, so he's going to take a stress, but he can still get a card. Oh, and he's found some TNT. That's going to let them remove two obstacles from the tactical map during the night. That is very good. Commando, I, I think he's going to try to gift the sniper with a card. So he does a search action for her. Oh, and we didn't find a card. Instead, we got a survivor. So you take one of the blue survivor cubes... And you toss it in the bag. Okay, that's not exactly what we wanted, but that's all right. Engineer can do four more, uh, four more barricades. And I say, yeah, let's do it. We have tons of barricades now. I think the sniper is going to try to search. Oh, got another survivor. Wow. So we now have four survivors in this bag, because we started with two. These survivors can help us. We'll see. And now the medic. Uh, I think the medic is going to heal. Ooh. You know what? Let's heal our heavy weapons. That character is very important. Okay. Oh, and look at this. I've already <laughs> made a mistake. Our medic has this card. Now, it doesn't take uh, an action or anything to play this. And it's got that sun, which means this is effective during the day. And it says, when using your character's day ability, you recover one stress. Our medic used their day ability twice, so they actually recovered two stress. So they're going to start the night here without any stress. Okay, now the day is over and we're moving into sunset. First thing that we do is we place out any obstacles and fortifications based on our location. And like I said before, it appears as if we have two black obstacles and two fortifications. So we take our obstacles, we shuffle them up. One side is black, one side is blue. So we're just worried about the black side. And we just want to get two random ones. So there, one, two. 
We're then going to place these in a random location here on our tactical map. Once again, when you're doing stuff randomly, you draw from the Nightmare deck. So right here it shows E2 East. So the East Quadrant and the 2 area. In the game, they have specific names for these. They call the Quadrant, they call that the Pit. And each of these lanes, these two lanes, they call caves. I'm not going to be using that terminology. I'm going to talk about these as quadrants, the four quadrants, north, south, east, and west, and the two different lanes within each quadrant. So this obstacle is going to go into the east quadrant, the second lane, and that little one there means it's going to be in this one ring. We have three different rings radiating out. We have ring one, ring two, and then out here, ring three. That's going to go right there. And we can consult our player aid to see that that is a catacombs obstacle. And I'll explain what that does here in a minute. So we also have this building obstacle that we need to place. Let's see where that's going. Okay, we have S1. South 1, it goes right here. But we now get two fortifications. We're going to randomly draw two. So let's see here. We got these jerry cans. Now we're going to have to place these in a random uh, quadrant of this middle portion, which is known as the refuge. So once again, we grab this and it's going to show us north. So that's going to go into the north quadrant. And then we have this alley. It's also going into the north. So you can't have two of these in the same quadrant. So you just go clockwise. So it's going to go right here. This fortification means that the infected are only going to be able to attack the characters here if they're in these barricade locations and they can't just attack from ring one. You're going to, that's going to make sense as soon as you see combat, which we are getting into very shortly. The next thing that we need to do in the sunrise phase, and in fact, we can flip over our player aid and we get a rundown of that right here. We get to place our barricades into these barricade locations surrounding the refuge. We have a bunch of them, so we're going to be able to place these all over the place. For reasons that I will explain later, I think I'm pretty interested in having these right here. We're going to try to fill up all of those. We're going to be able to fill up most of these, to be honest, so... Let's put them out and see what holes we have and figure out where we want the holes to be. These barricades are going to protect us from the infected coming in. Okay, so we could go two and two up here if we wanted. Okay, I think that works fine. Actually, maybe we'll go like this, even it out a little bit. All right, we got a lot of barricades during the day, so we're well prepared. Oh! I should have moved this down to the night now because we are going to be heading into the night. We now get to decide where our character is going to be inside this central area that they're going to be defending. And there's a couple of things we want to think about. One thing is that this building is actually blocking characters from shooting any infected that are in these two areas. This building basically means that you can only attack infected that are on this first spot, except for the sniper. The sniper has the ability to ignore that and shoot past it. So I think we definitely want the sniper here in the south. Now the jerry can, as I said, it's going to let us actually destroy a barricade in order to make the ammo that we're shooting explosive, which means it hits everybody in the ring that you're firing into. Well, the captain already has explosive damage, as does our engineer. So we probably don't want either of them to be with the jerry can. We want someone who doesn't have explosive ammo. I actually think having our commando there would be fantastic. So we're going to put the commando there. If you look at their gun, they actually get to hit two different targets. And it can be in rings one or two. 
The other thing we want to keep in mind is that we really want to be protecting this area here because at the end of the night, we're going to decide which quadrant we're going to be leaving out of. And that's going to determine what direction we go on the map. And we want to go from six to eight. So we want to be heading out here to the west. And so this is sort of a more important quadrant for us than any of the other ones. So I say let's bulk up there a little bit. Let's have a little bit, let's put our engineer here so we have a little bit of range and we can couple them, yeah, with our medic. Now, you know what? We'll put the captain here with the sniper and we'll put our heavy weapons guy over there. He can do some good damage. That's how we're gonna start. Now, we'll always have the ability to move around, but we're gonna start like that. That sounds good. Okay, now we determine the bosses. The bosses are gonna move in. We look to this ticket. So we're on ticket number one and we're playing on easy. So there's gonna be two bosses. If we were playing on the medium difficulty, we'd have three bosses and on the hard difficulty, we'd have four. So we're playing easy, just two bosses. So our first boss is gonna be the Tortured. And wow, this looks like a tough boss. You can see there that the terror that they're doing is gonna be one plus the number of wounds that they have. And they have 10 health, oh my goodness. So this is a really bad boss. Now we have to pick a random cave for them to come in on. And it's gonna be East One. So there we go, East One, and they start in ring three. You can see on their card here, they can actually move one. So they're gonna be moving in. This guy is definitely gonna be a priority. Oh no, and our next boss here is the Dogue. Is that how you pronounce that? Ooh, the question mark means we get to pick where they come in. Hmm. I'm gonna say right here so that we can have our sniper just take care of them right away. They're particularly dangerous. They don't have much health. They don't do that much terror, but they make all the other infected move two spaces. Normally they can only move one. So they're gonna make all of the infected move towards us that much quicker. Very, very bad. We're gonna wanna put a stop to that pretty fast. Luckily, they're not going to be moving at all. They're just going to stay there and we can just snipe them away. Okay, those are our bosses. We now get to move into the first hour of the night.